Hi guys. Hey everyone. Welcome to another episode of House Flipper on our channel Make2. Happy New Year by the way. Happy New Year to everybody. Today we are starting working on what we're calling because it is the Breaking Bad House. If you want to see more House Flipper and more renovation of Breaking Bad House, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. So today we're going to be focusing on cleaning this mess. The whites have abandoned this house long ago and squatters have come in and people have done graffiti everywhere, but some things, some mess has remained, such as the pizza box and the famous pizza on the roof. And we're not going to be spoiling too much of the show, I think, just to make it possible for people to watch this episode and not worry about the show being spoiled. Okay, that is a good warning to me, just in case I were to say anything bad. But the show has been off the air for a long time, so that's, of course, why the Whites aren't here anymore. Actually, the show started in 2008, right? <sighs> so it's 10 years old at this point? Did it? I'm thinking, did it start I think so. around the time we met? Yeah. I thought I was watching it. You yeah. watched like a couple of episodes without me, and then I watched a couple of episodes without you, and I was like, this is amazing, and we should watch it together. Mm -hmm. and then... that, that's how it went. <laughs> <laughs> you tell yourself that. What do you mean? It's you fine. you no, watched a couple no. of episodes. And... I'd watch some and I said we should watch it. Yeah, and I took a and while. You, yeah, and then you watched and was like, we should watch it. Oh, yeah, and then I then, saw you watch and was like, hey, why are you... Anyway. I think the second episode had put you off continuing to watch it because gross things happened in the second episode. Yeah. And I watched, you know, up to that point and was like, whatever, it's good. So let's continue watching it. Anyway. Anyway, we both watched it and we liked it. That was the important thing. Yes. And we enjoyed and watched the whole thing. So if you have enjoyed watching it over the years, do let us know. Keen to know how many Breaking Bad fans are watching. It's on Netflix nowadays. So wow. if you yeah. haven't seen it, then that's one place you could watch it. It's basically an example of one of those prestige drama shows which I think Game of Thrones is still in that tradition, shows where the main characters are not likable, <laughs> where you have an anti-hero as the hero of the show. Yes, that makes sense. And I think it was one of those pivotal shows, which was just, you know, really, really, really good at the time. It was pretty groundbreaking. I still think it's a very, very strong show, like just very different from other shows and a lot that uh, lots of people who are making TV can get inspiration from. It's just super well done. My mom watched it. I think I recommended to her while we were still watching it and she mm -hmm. really enjoyed it. Well, My, she likes shows like that. She, she likes just... Game of Thrones stuff. My brother, who also likes Game of Thrones. You can't has... clean the store. We, we've yeah, I know. That. I just... He's never got into it. He keeps saying, maybe I should watch Breaking Bad. I'm like, um, maybe it is really good. And then he never does. So, Which is interesting because your brother is a scientist in real life and <laughs> the main character of the show is a scientist. I think this one we just dispose of. Yeah, I think you're right. Let's see, can we get anything for this? No, because it's not something you can buy in the game. Yeah, we have to be careful what we're selling. We want to keep that pizza we said before because yeah, it's so is... iconic mm -hmm. for the show. So we're just going to keep it. So, you know, people who are watching this video who are not familiar with the show and are like, why aren't you getting rid of that pizza? We're not getting rid of it for a reason, because yeah. it's important to the show. <laughs> but I think we will put some of our own touches on this house as we go forward, because, all right, so the whole thing is that this is House Flipper's version of the house on the show. And the thing is that most TV houses don't actually make any sense in real life. The layouts of a TV house don't often make sense if you try to use it as a real life house. And that's because... Basically, they want a house to be the backdrop for the plot of the show. So the house is whatever it needs to be for the show. It doesn't need to be anything for real life. So you'll find that like a lot of TV houses just, yeah, they are their own thing. They don't always translate really well to what it should be in real life. I, we've, I looked up a lot of fan-made floor plans of this house and people have talked about things that maybe didn't quite make sense, like the number of bathrooms, for instance, that should or should not be in this house. Yeah. And yeah, it's just because that that's the way that TV sets work. You know, they're not supposed to work as real houses. They're supposed to work for the TV show. It is still interesting. We What you showed me, like the five or six that you'd found over the course of today. The floor plans. Yeah. yeah and it was just really interesting that you, this bit, which is the open plan area where obviously everything happens, mm -hmm. uh, that's you can't really fake an open plan. Like it is what it is. But yeah. the other rest of the house... 
they obviously didn't have an actual set with all the rooms connecting because I guess, you know, they need to fit in all the cameras and stuff. Yeah. So they just had a series of rooms with backdrops and that's how they made it. And maybe they didn't even ever think, does this make sense physically as the house? Maybe they did and they just said, we don't care. It's all about... I think you it's know, a rare show. TV show that actually does film 100% in a real house or yeah. tries to build a real house to scale. It's a very rare show that does that. Interestingly, The Sopranos, which was a forerunner in terms of modern shows that really, you know, really artistic and good and, you know, focused an on great writing. Yeah, yeah. that was, uh, it wasn't in a real house. The exteriors was all from a real house, but I think they did recreate the interior. I think they did use the interior of the house and they couldn't and they fully recreated the interior mm-hmm. for the later seasons. Certainly yeah. the ground, the first floor. No, I think that's often done as well. But mm-hmm. just because you recreate the interior does not mean that you do it 100% faithfully. So the Breaking Bad house is a real house and it really does exist in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And they... I think probably filmed some of the interior of the real house at one point. But then, of course, to have a show that goes on for, was it six six seasons? Six, maybe. Five or six seasons, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, I can't believe we don't know that. But anyway, um, in order to have a house that goes on for that long or a TV show that goes on for that long, you can't, unless you buy the house, you know, which they didn't, unless you buy the house, then you can't always be filming inside the house you know Mm -hmm. because people actually live there and in fact people still live the original owners still live in the real life breaking bad house that was used for all the exterior shots and everything (laughs) and they i think have basically regretted oh no yeah allowing their show to be part of the well well hold on be careful because no i think you can sell it and get some money out of it. So. But we're going to leave it for now, I think. But you can. I'm just saying. I, I'm going to go to this thing. Sure. This light fixture. Uh, I think you can sell that. Yeah, let me try and sell that for two bucks. Five bucks. Five bucks. So I think I've just cleared out everything that I want to clear out from the house. And now I'm going to just go around and finish up cleaning. And then we'll get the outside. It's actually in pretty good shape. Yeah. Should I get rid of this? Clean that um, hamburger. I mean, save it for now. Okay. <laughs> we might do that the, just before we things. said it. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I was trying to say about the original owners who are still yeah. the owners. They get lots of people stopping by yeah, their I'm house sure and taking pictures in front of their house and sometimes even throwing pizzas on their roof. Oh, no. Yeah, it's pretty bad. So they actually set a fence up around the front of their property to keep people off of their property. And I think I, I read that sometimes they'll sit in the open door of their garage, basically like patrolling. And if they see somebody showing up to take a picture of their house, they'll yell at them. Aww. Yeah, they've really become kind of bitter, apparently, about the whole popularity of the show and the house. And Well, it's where they live. <laughs> yeah, no, I understand, I understand. I understand. But it's, I don't know, maybe make some money out of it if you wanted. But I, I, I think just want to live their life. Yeah, of course, of course. It's, it's easy to say from this side of the screen, but... Yeah, it's, I think they you might get, like it the first fifty times, <laughs> but the first two hundred times maybe it wears a little thin. Yeah, I think what I was reading was reviews on Yelp. Like people actually <laughs> set up an entry for the Breaking Bad house on Yelp as if it was really like a paid attraction or something, oh, and they dear. like gave it you know one star for a, a nasty owner, even though the owner is perfectly within their rights to be like oh, yeah. get off my property, right? Yeah, but yeah, you just get a lot of kind of fans who are a little bit rude i guess and maybe uh don't treat the property with the respect that it deserves yeah so yeah now i'm trying to clean here there's something dirty i maybe don't know where on it the is. outside of the house it looks like it's on the inside if you look where the spot is sure yeah but it's i think it looks difficult clean. is it the window maybe that needs cleaning yeah i've noticed that since an update probably after right. our first episode the windows don't need cleaning anymore yeah or at least none of the, the all the houses we got when we were Was playing it? the game before didn't need cleaning now they you look totally up on the ceiling right yeah. yeah. I don't know, man. This is weird. But sometimes this happens, right? Like you'll just be scrubbing, 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 and then randomly the spot disappears. Yeah, that's true. Well, we'll try again uh, on the outside later, perhaps. Let's see. Yeah, we've got a little bit of things in the outside here. Oh, I've got some lots in the bathroom. The one bath... I, I mentioned before that there is fan controversy over, over how many bathrooms are actually yes. in the house. And there's only one bathroom shown in the house. So in our previous video where we bought this house where we were talking about Breaking Bad and spoiling it a little bit, we mentioned that we thought there were two bathrooms in the house, but actually I did more research and yeah, they've only ever shown one bathroom in the whole house. 
Yeah, yeah. so it does seem that it's an it's an ensuite to the master yeah. bedroom, but also everyone else can access it somehow. So that's they, the well, they bit have to unclear. access it through the master bedroom. Yeah, we guess. Yeah. So we might try to change the layout a little bit to match what we think the house should be, or we haven't decided yet. So. No, but we, we yeah we might. It's an option. Yeah, but we also just want to sell the house. And I think the designers of House Flipper did a really amazing job. Uh, As we were saying a bunch of times now, it's imperfect. It's not possible to make a perfect one-to-one recreation of this house because it just, you know, it was never made to be a real house. Right. It was designed to be a set. Yeah. So, but I think the guys did a great job. This does really have the feel of it. The design is very close. They've got the two bathrooms because... That just makes sense. But that ha- does mean there's a sacrifice of a bedroom. Because I think yeah. there's three bedrooms yeah. in the actual uh, house. This, yeah, in the actual house. Is this the money it's pointing me to? Maybe. I'm going to leave the money. You did the ceiling as well? Yeah, I've done everything. Let me just... Oh, it's down here. There we go. I think I think go ahead and collect the money. See, Because I think you'll be <laughs> pleasantly surprised at how much you get out of it. Use, okay. use the selling thing. Right. Oh, use the selling thing. Yeah. So, see, oh my goodness. see, one dollar equals five hundred. Yeah, you you want to go for it? Yeah, that gives us more money to play with. Because I think if you just collect it, I'm not sure what you get out of it. But selling it, wow, yeah, We're making, I don't know how much thousands <laughs> here. That's amazing, Maybe 10, right? Ten thousand right here. Totally 5, makes 000. sense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I don't know what we can do with the hole in the floor. Whether we can cover it or anything. Um. Yeah, this is interesting. Maybe. There's not enough space to turn it into a bathroom. I was thinking we could put the bathroom here. That's true. Then have this as a bedroom. But that's maybe just a cloakroom. If there's enough space for a toilet just here and a little vanity, maybe we could do that and just leave the hole. I don't know. We'll decide yeah. later. Let's continue cleaning. Let's do some cleaning. Now, uh, kitchen, kitchen, kitchen. Here we go. Sweet. Yeah, I was I was going to say that just building a TV show house in any game can be kind of difficult. Like I've tried to do it in Sims Free Play, Sims f- No, not in Sims 4 yet, but I've seen other people doing it in Sims 4 and you always hear people saying, you know, this is not going to be an exact replica of the house on the TV show cuz the layout doesn't always make sense and yeah, it's just one of those things. By the way, I I knew that I was going to like Sims Free Play cuz when I was first starting to play it. I think there was some event going on that went it involved the fishing hobby uh-huh. and all of the fish had Breaking Bad inspired names. <laughs> really? Yeah. So I was like, oh, there's some Breaking Bad fans on the game developer team. So I think I'm going to get rid of this oh, yeah, because I can't. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. You can't clean these. They're nasty as well. But the then, oven seems fine. Of course, that means then we get stuck with the, the house flippers, normal... Yeah. Yeah, just boring counters. Yeah. Okay, it looks like we're doing pretty good on the inside. Wait, there's one hanging on the wall. Oh, sorry, you're right. Let's get up there. Bang, bang. <laughs> okay, let's go outside, and there's quite a lot of things. We should dispose of that, yeah. I think. Uh, yep. Uh, yeah, I dispose oh, of this. this one. Yep. So other TV shows with anti-heroes as a protagonist. We mentioned The Sopranos. I think Mad Men is another one. I think that these days I just prefer... You know this about me, but these days I just prefer... I'm try something. What are you going to do? <laughs> what? I'm just walking on the surface. Oh, sure. Okay, you can are pick up the bear. that? Um, no, I'm leaving it. Yeah. <laughs> Again, it's part of it's, the show. Uh, yeah, part anyway. of the show. But I, I was going to say like... Oh, these... look, you can see the pot plants. Look at the top right, the little... Pot plants? You can see the little plants yeah. on the little mini-map. Yeah. It's cute. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> TV shows with anti-heroes. Go. I just prefer to watch shows with characters that I like these days. I know. That's all. Yeah. That's all I wanted to say. I mean, I will happily watch a show which is a prestige drama and has got great writing and great acting and all that stuff, but... There's just something missing for me. I can't be like a fan fan of a show. It, well, it's been a while. I was a fan fan of Breaking Bad. And that's probably the last show that I was a fan fan of where the main characters were so unlikable. Right. <laughs> These days, that. if I want to be a fan fan of a show, you got to make me actually like the characters and and as people, you know. Right. I don't yeah. know how you feel about that shows these days i like shows where <laughs> it is nice to watch a show where people love each other and are happy 
Um, we've spoken about a number of K-dramas before on the channel, and those, I think, do a really good job of having a really strong, positive emotional core. Mm -hmm. Even if people go through hardships, that's definitely a more positive emotional experience. But I think the issue, particularly with the TV show, is you're committing to so many hours yes, of it. Yes, that's exactly uh, it. Like a two-hour screwed up crazy movie like we've seen a couple recently or ones that aren't all super happy mm -hmm. that's okay because you're only watching it for a little bit of time but when you've got series and seasons and seasons of people who are just unlikable yeah it's, it's a difficult. bit rough yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. like there was a tv show we were watching yesterday our prison uh, playbook the prison playbook yeah, which is drama yeah a pretty good show we're just like i'm just not sure where it's going the character's a bit all over the place even though they're the main character's quite likable so we just stopped a anyway. little bit bold. Okay, I, there's still some more to clean, but I don't know yeah, where it is. Yeah, this is super so, strange. Yeah, I think I might leave it for now because I can't see the problems. Yeah, sorry to the people who are a bit OCD and our viewers. We know the, how that is because we totally feel the same. But yeah, we just cannot find these places that need okay, cleaning. Well, so this, th this definitely is a, a place where cleaning yeah. is necessary. But uh, maybe we should just like paint walls refloor things yeah, add true. the doors back in oh it's up there oh, maybe not yeah why don't we see this was carpet and this was wood but how do you want to do it what do you want to start with you want to start with paint yeah do you think what do you think about this paint though do you think you want to get rid of all of this this is not even paint this is like what is this this is just Stucco. nastiness okay nastiness <laughs> <laughs> so uh we could go for wall doors first i guess we yeah let's do see some. for doors do you want to go to doors first yeah uh, and I don't know. Let's got to do the of, exterior uh, front door. door here. Front door with knock front. Yeah, just a brown one. This one. Yeah. That's all we need, right? Yeah, I think so. Okay, I think we only need one. Yeah, because the others are covered. Oh uh, well, there's this one. Yeah, now let's do door. the internal doors. Yeah. Uh, this, these could be just ordinary brown. This one, internal, so expensive. Well, we made a lot of money. So. That's true. <laughs> okay, then. It's uh, all good, man. Uh, ha, ha. Yeah, so that is actually another show in the Breaking Bad universe, Better Call Saul. And that's based on, you know, another character from the show. And we have been watching that, but we haven't started the latest season. No, we do mean to watch that. Yeah. That's also one where it's not strictly an anti-hero, but it is kind of a de depressing show yeah so it's taken us a while to huh all right hold on, hold on we haven't decided yet whether we're going to change the layout of this to better match the show do you think you want to keep that bathroom where it is it's technically not how the layout is in the house itself in the show well like there is no bathroom here yeah i think i'm comfortable not knocking down walls i think the thing is can we fit a bathroom in here and if we can, let's turn this into a nursery. Okay. And then we get a three bedroom. Whoa. I'm still stuck on the floor plan that fans put together. Okay, let's first, okay, <laughs> let's go, go in that room then and see what we can do with that floor. This can, one. We, can we cover the floor? And if so, then can we, Aww. you know, add stuff in to make it a bathroom? Okay. Let's do. Yeah, like floor. I don't see. I don't see how they would let us cover that hole this in the floor. One. Like I feel like it's. Yeah, mm. it's a, it's basically there to stay, which yeah. is a cool feature. But then it means you can't use the the hall closet as a bathroom, really, can you? No. Oops, I just tiled it, but it's only cheap. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, why don't we see if there is? <laughs> Maybe you I can... think there still might be space for a toilet in there. Yeah. Or it could be a laundry room. I don't know. Some of these fan floor plans had laundry facilities in the garage. Laundry. Let's see. Mountable washer. Do you have to put in plumbing, though? Yeah. It We've looks never like... done this, though, have we? We haven't, like, done new plumbing in a room. I think we have. Oh, press. Yeah, let's see. I just want to see if it... maybe we can't even put a toilet in because we haven't got the stuff. Stuff. Uh, the plumbing. Right. So that's what I'm saying. How do we put the plumbing in? I don't in? know. I'm just going to. Let's just take a. Little one. Yeah, it looks like it should fit. Not telling us why, but where is the plumbing? Do a uh, search. Installations. Oh, that's good. That's good. Toilet, plumbing. You okay. want to see if you want to turn this into a washing room and then have that? <laughs> Just having a hole in the floor. Yeah. All uh, right. Let's see. 
We're well, not we going to have a dryer necessarily. We wouldn't. That's wait, the compromise. But you okay? You want this to be a laundry room and a toilet, or do you want this to be a bathroom? Is what I'm. I think just a la- just a laundry room. It'll have to be. Okay. I don't think there's space for both in here. Right. That's what I mean. Either or. It would yeah. be either a laundry room or a regular bathroom. So which one do you want it to be? Um, I don't mind. <laughs> Basically, I think we're saying we're going to turn this into a bedroom, which will be a nursery. Not necessarily. Gonna... See, okay. It's hard to say. So this room should technically be the entrance to the master bedroom, and the master bedroom should be kind of like an L shape. Yeah, it is an L shape. I think they've done that's why I think they've done a good job. This is an L shape. Yeah, but they made the entrance to the master bedroom on the side of the hallway. Yeah. When it should be on the end of the hallway where the bathroom is, there should be no door here. This should be a wall. Right. Do you see what I'm saying? Yes. So we kind of could, I don't know. (laughs) Uh, We could extend this room a little bit more. uh, Get rid of it. Maybe, I don't know, make this, like move this space here. This little space here, that could be part of this room on the other side with a hole in the wall in the floor. It could be an entrance between the master bathroom to the hallway. The master bathroom's all the way over here. Right. But if you close off that little alcove there And make the master bathroom have like a a hole here. something like that. Basically, we don't have to decide on the bedrooms now. We could just solicit comments okay. from people. You guys let us know what you think. Should we try to make something closer to the floor plan from the show? Or should we just work with the floor plan that the game developers gave us? You Let us know what you think. So what we should do maybe is work on the kitchen and the living room. Yeah. You said you want to do some painting. Well, yeah, because this is ugly. Yeah. So let's get to some painting. And yeah, right. we'll definitely, it's good to have explored that. I'm really interested in your views about what we should do to try and uh, do the show justice and make a house that's going to make us some money. Now, what color paint do you want to go with? That's the thing too. I don't remember what the color paint is from the show. But yeah, we could do like Southwestern types of colors because the show takes place in New Mexico. Okay. So yeah, some, ooh, we have wallpapers. Whoa, hold up, hold up, hold up. This is a game changer. Hmm. Okay, scroll down. Should they all be this wooden panel vertical? Like this package of panels. There's one up above, dark. That one matches the Heisenberg wall. Oh, really? Maybe? Does it? Um, what do you think we could do? I think there was just a feature wall, as ugly as it was. And then the, the other walls were painted? Yeah. Okay, so we have determined that the paint should be some sort of beige. <laughs> yep, that's what I was thinking. So there was... Oh, wait, there's some colors... Down here. Ooh. Morning yellow. I don't trust these swatches. I feel I like once they go on the wall, it's gonna I made that sand almond. So like we said, a sort of southwest deserty feel. Okay. Let's put down a couple of these pots. Yeah. And then actually the brick around the fireplace should be white. It's like white painted brick. We'll white see how painted. that goes. Yeah, I don't know if we can do that. Yeah. Okay, let's get the paint oh well, let's get the paintbrush <laughs> out. Let's get to some painting. Now, this is our first video of the new year. I think we wished everybody Happy New Year. Mm -hmm. But should we talk about what we did over the break? We watched a crap load of movies. (laughs) (laughs) We did, actually. A lot of space-themed movies. Yeah, because we're going to see space stuff next week, which is going to be a lot of fun. Crossing fingers that the government shutdown doesn't (sighs) too badly affect this planned vacation. Yes, mean, it definitely hasn't affected one day of it, but it has affected another day of it. Yeah. But hopefully they're negotiating later, later this week, and hopefully the powers that be will come to a compromise. Yeah. So what did we watch? We watched... Uh, tell you what, non-space movies we watched. Let's focus on those. I don't know if any of you are interested in space as much as me, but we watched um, Bird Box yes. and A Quiet Place. Yes. Two movies that are kind of similar, <laughs> uh, but about different senses. Yeah, so Bird Box is on Netflix. It's the Sandra Bullock movie, which we've talked about Sandra Bullock in other House Flipper yeah. videos as well. And so it was great for you that she had this... <laughs> big new movie on netflix which apparently is like their most viewed yeah. movie in all of netflix history so that was really good for her it mm-hmm. s- speaks to the power of her stardom although i saw some something like 
somebody on Twitter said something about that lady in Bird Box indicating that they were too young to know who Sandra uh, Bullock is. So. Too young, well, right? I don't even know, that does not compute. Yeah, I know. I do not understand. It was it was pretty good. I yeah. really like post-apocalypse and apocalypse type of movies. I really like seeing the world ending in a Hollywood movie, but I'm not sure that I really felt the execution of that very... I don't know. It, it wasn't the best movie for me. Yeah. I thought she was really good. I had no qualms about her or how her character was done. I thought that yeah. was good. And it, I think it did. her character made sense. and it, it was pretty good. It was just, yeah, a little bit like, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Um, a Quiet Place, I found a bit frustrating, but it was a really good movie as well. And that was a different take on post-apocalypse. But both of them were not to do, hopefully, any spoilers, but post-apocalypse, which was not really man's fault, human's fault, for why the apocalypse was there. Yeah. It wasn't clear that it was. It was just like something really bad was happening that was made there be an apocalypse. But mm-hmm. it wasn't like in The Stand or other movies where... Or Day After Tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. we'd unleashed this zombie virus, and but it wasn't that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, That's so... actually a good point. Yeah, there are different flavors of post-apocalyptic mm-hmm. movies. There's like... The zombie style, monster style, like, uh, what was it? Train to Busan, which we saw. Yeah, as... which again, that was a gov. They implied that was a government experiment. The oh, same, yeah, they did, didn't they? The same in 28, 28 Days, Days Later. Later yeah. um, Shaun of the Dead, that kind of thing. Most zombie movies, I think, say it's human's fault. I think it might have been another thing that came out. Is that of... Window Dirty? Oh. Is that? Yes. Yes. Yay. Good spot. Yeah, but this was, it wasn't like uh, aliens invading. It was, um, oh, we haven't done that yet. It was just monsters. It was just monsters, maybe. And yeah. But they left it supernatural. They left knows? it a mystery where the monsters came from and what they wanted and all that stuff. Yeah, it was, was more it religious? About... Was it just yeah. aliens? I had no idea. Basically, no idea. it was more about the characters, which I think yeah. is what makes a good post apocalyptic story is it mm-hmm. follows the characters in this new kind of world that they find themselves in. And it, examines how humans act in a new social context where everything has gone crazy and nothing makes sense anymore and all the structures have broken down so how do human beings make new structures and how do like the worst and best parts of humanity come out when Mm -hmm. the yeah when society breaks down I like those kind of things. That that window's dirty as well. It is as well. Nice. You are on a roll. <laughs> Just like I am rolling this paint. Uh, yep. Yeah. So, so, yeah, that was think, really good. You think maybe A Quiet Place was better than Bird Box? Yeah, I, I think so. I think it just... Um, sort of held together better overall. I thought but the it, filmmaking was better in A Quiet Place. Like, the direction and the cinematography was more yeah. impressive in A Quiet Place. Yeah. I saw there's a little bit too much telegraphing of like, oh, look, there's a thing over here. And remember, because in five minutes, we're going to come back and something's going to happen over there. <laughs> that was, I found it a little annoying, but it, it was well done. Apparently, yeah. there's going to be a sequel of that. Yeah, um, but it won't necessarily involve the same characters. No, I not think. necessarily. Yeah. But good for John Krasinski of The Office, Jim from The Office. He yeah. wrote and directed the movie or co-wrote and singly directed the movie Mm -hmm. and he did really well yeah never would have thought he'd have the talent for something like that when i first saw the office yeah amazing um an other movie we watched that was space related was first man which is the story of neil armstrong's life during the 60s so during when he joined nasa from the space program yeah leading Uh, up to the moon mission yeah and actually on the moon as well you see him walking on the moon yeah uh, so that was cool for me because i like that and we're going to space stuff next week mm-hmm. what i thought was really cool about that if you have any interest in space things is a lot of movies you see them take off and it all seems very dramatic but in this one you're seeing him and his um fellow astronauts in the space rocket going into space and you really get a sense of how cramped they are how powerless they are yeah and, and how ha- rickety everything yeah is. you're hearing it's sort of shriek as the metal grinds against each other and then you just see the whole thing shudder and shake and it, you really get a sense of how stressful it must have been like physically stressful as well as psychologically stressful to be in one of those rockets so i was just thinking like it was just impressive that they got to the moon in a rocket that is that rickety basically yeah. just like a bucket of parts that could have all broken at any yeah you know just at a gust of wind that went the wrong way or something yeah so when we um we went to a talk once when we were at Dragon Con, which is a sort of sci-fi fantasy convention thing in the US, uh, that we heard an astronaut talk. And he spoke about American astronauts and rockets versus Russian. 
And his thing was that Russians make things that will just last. Like they make them really, really solid, but they kind of over-engineer them. Whereas Americans, like they build it to just the specs that they have and no more. And so if you push it beyond the specs, it will just not work. And you really got a sense from see seeing First Man that, yeah, this thing was built to do exactly what it was supposed to and nothing more. Uh, and if you pushed it a little bit hard, it would fall apart. But maybe in the end, it was that philosophy or mindset or culture that made the moon landing uh, more possible for the Americans and the Russians because they didn't over-engineer anything and waste resources by that. I was going to say that one of the other things that we watched was, what was it, Moon Machines? It was like a six-part yeah. documentary mm -hmm. series about the moon missions. And what I got from that, which I hadn't realized before, was how much of the stuff was made by private companies. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and not the government, obviously, by companies that the government hired, like Northrop Grum Grumman and... Uh, what Playtex. Was the Playtex, yeah. I mean, a whole bunch of companies, GM, uh, Boeing. Yeah. And so I wonder how it was done in communist Russia. Like what, who built the stuff in communist Russia if they didn't have these massive companies the way that we did in America? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I have no idea, <laughs> like politically or economically, like how much of an impact that had but, on the space race. By the way, you're painting all this and I, I was going to say you're maybe say it no. should be a different okay. thing. <laughs> um, well, let's carry on the hallway the same. Yeah. Oh, maybe the kitchen is white. I'm not sure. Okay. But we'll see how. Well, we paint's have to... cheap. It's also dark in here because it's getting dark outside. Yeah. But yeah, we'll we'll do as much as we can in this video like we normally do. And then in, if things get too long, we'll move on to another one, another video and keep on in the other video. Yep. Because, yeah, one video is too long to do an entire house. So what else did we watch besides these two? We watched uh, First Man, we said that, and we watched The Martian, of course. The Martian, we watched uh, Apollo 13, mm -hmm. and we watched Hidden Figures. Yep. And... All great movies about trying to, well, all great movies for trying to get a more realistic look at NASA and how things go during missions. Yeah, obviously The Martian is the only one not based at all in reality. The others are all based in reality. I think if I've remembered what we <laughs> listed off correctly. Yeah. And then we tried to rewatch Gravity. Gravity. Yeah, we had recently watched a comment if we spoke about it, Roma by Alfonso Cuaron that was Really, really, really good. It was yeah. amazing. It's on Netflix. Uh, yep, yep. It's a Netflix release. And like all my families watched it, even if they don't like artsy movies, it's quite an artsy movie. Uh, it was really, really good. And we thought it was Gravity, which was by him as well, and with Sandra Bullock. But uh, you just weren't having it. You could not get into it. You were very frustrated. I, I think that when we first watched it in the theater in 2013, when it came out, it was just really impressive graphics and visual effects and CGI and you know, steady cam, or not steady cam, but a single cam, like a single mm -hmm. camera shot that would, which is Quaron's technique. It's a single camera shot that lasts, you know, as long as possible. And it's a really cool technique for making the viewer feel really like in the middle of the action. Mm -hmm. And we were just really impressed by that. But then rewatching the movie and knowing how things turn out, I'm just stuck on the script and the writing and... It's just like, why, why is it? Why is this the way this? Why, why is she doing this? And, and why is he doing this? And why doesn't the science make sense? Because, you know, oh, hi, cat. <laughs> it's her dinner time, just like clockwork. Anyway, yeah. Um, so yeah, the script was just really difficult for me to, I just, yeah, and we couldn't finish it because I was no. like, this is just irritating me. And I would rather watch something else with my time. I think after we get to about five minutes of you shouting at the TV, <laughs> that that's that's too much. We can t take one minute, two minute, three minute, four minute, five minutes. It's like, no, we've got to stop now. It was too what? much. It's just, <laughs> you know, you want a movie to be both entertaining and also just make sense. And it's it wasn't on a rewatch. It just wasn't one of those movies that... Yeah made sense and in a bad way and i just i was having a hard time with it so we moved on to what movie did we watch and said um what was the last one i think you'd already mentioned it uh um, contact no i didn't mention contact it. no we had contact contact which is a really good movie a little bit cheesy in parts but 
it was really made in well 1997, done. so yeah, yeah, things but, weren't as dark, yeah. I guess. Just like, this room is dark, so before we carry on, I want to put a light in. Yeah, let's oh, do that. Upgrade. Let's Faster. Upgrade instant pain. Let's get two upgrades for all three categories. Mm -hmm. Let's put a light in, as you said. Yeah, yeah so Contact. It's a really good movie. Um, we, really good you know, book we, as well. I've seen that multiple times, and I think I just, I knew that it was going to be the thing that I needed to watch <laughs> to clear my brain of gravity. So... Oh yeah, let's get like a, a a lamp that is close to the ceiling. I think that makes sense Maybe for some a of these kitchen. Halogens. Yeah, possibly. Right. So, contact. Yeah, that is based originally on a book written by Carl Sagan, who is a really fantastic science writer. And I guess the scientist as well, but I think he mostly made a name for himself as a writer. Yeah, I mean, the, what's it called? Um, Voyager, mm -hmm. the uh, space satellite probe that's now exited the solar system that has a golden LP on it, a record. Mm -hmm. uh, that was all his idea, his brainchild, and that is now outside of our solar system. Where's the light switch? Yeah, we need to put in a light switch. Right, so he... And the same, I think he originally wrote Contact to be a movie script, but then mm -hmm. he ended up making it a book and the movie came into development a lot later. Right. So this is a movie starring Jodie Foster, Matthew McConaughey, and a whole bunch of people. And it's basically about, yeah, aliens contacting Earth in a sort of interesting fashion and then humanity's response. And so that was meant to be a bit realistic as well. Like how would people respond to the the knowledge that we are not alone in the universe and yeah. how would that affect scientists as well as people who are religious? So Yeah, it was a little bit like uh, Arrival, which came out much more recently. Yeah. Uh, a similar kind of theme, but Contact is really good and Jodie Foster was really good in it. She's really good um, in it. Yeah, very affecting does it really, really well. Yeah. And at points when I've watched it, I've got a little bit teary. But one particular point in the movie. Which point? Okay to go. Oh, right. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> Try very, not to spoil it. It's it was... emotionally affecting. Yeah yeah. 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 So those, are, I guess, were the science movies that we watched. And other we than that, we watched a whole bunch. Over we didn't the... do any recording of videos, but we played a lot of video games. You went hard on Sims 4. Right. I went hard on Zelda Breath of the Wild, and we both had a lot of fun. Yeah. And we you know, make content out of video games for our channel, but then sometimes we then don't end up playing video games for just our own pleasure. Like yeah. we're just only using them to make content when sometimes you just lose the fun of the game itself if you're only using them to make YouTube videos. So I think that we hadn't played too much of Sims 4 Get Famous, the new expansion pack. And I was like, well... I just want to know what this pack is all about. So I ended up like just playing on my own with a sim that I made based on another K-drama, My Love from the Star. And I just took that sim character all the way through the different levels of fame and reputation and all that stuff, just trying to play the actual gameplay of the pack. Yeah. And that was super fun. Yeah, you seem to get really into it, as you said. When we're playing to record, we always think, oh, we should record for this and we should wait we can't do any more with these characters because we want to record them or we can't do anything more with this house because we want to record it and it, yeah it does sometimes feel a little bit stifling mm -hmm. so it's nice just to say we're not going to record any of this this is not going on the channel this is just for us yeah so you played a lot of zelda breath of the wild on the switch mm -hmm. which was it's a really good game everyone knows that i knew it before i got it because <laughs> everyone's like it's an amazing game it won game of the year by lots of places last year so you know mm. rightly so it's a really good game. Okay, so we have basically painted the inside of the house and we are still going to discuss between us and maybe with also some commentary from you guys what to do with the bedroom layouts in the rest of the house. But I think this is probably good enough for the first video of this house. Yep, I think so. It's quite a big house. There's a lot of walls. There's still more to paint and some plastering to do too. Yep. But our cat is whining about her dinner and mm -hmm. my stomach is rumbling <laughs> about dinner. So I think we're going to call this one and leave the rest of the house for another video or two, maybe. Mm -hmm. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video. Please let us know in the comments what you think. And if you are new to our channel, feel free to subscribe because we've got plenty more House Flipper on the way. Thanks for watching.